Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be going over some of the new features that we've added to our snow loads calculator. Let's start. Now you're able to calculate the unbalanced snow loads and also your snow drift loads uh, with the snow load calculator. But first let's go over some of the inputs that will have an effect on these values. After you have inputted your site and building properties, for your unbalanced snow loads, you will require um, to enter the horizontal distance from the eave to ridge and roof ridge. These are not values that we didn't ask before, but these two values are uh, what is used in the formulas for calculating unbalanced snow loads. You can see that in this section here where we calculate your snow dome density and the drift height for unbalanced snow loads. So, in the unbalanced snow load section, we provide you with the unbalanced snow with drafter system, and we also provide the uh, unbalanced snow searcher general, which is this one here, and also the width. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have a drafter system. It's just a uh, such, um, it's just calculates the value uh, in situations where you have a drafter system. So, for example, if you change this value to twenty five feet, if you change the horizontal distance from eave to ridge to let's say something more than twenty, then um, you're not um, you don't have the rafter system anymore. And uh, if you change the roof pitch to, let's say, something that is more than 7, uh, let's give it 9, then we don't, uh, we don't, we, uh, unbalanced nodes are not needed to be considered uh, for pitches that are greater than 7, 12, or um, less than 0 0.5, 12. And that's it, that's all you um, needed to know for unbalanced nodes. Now let's move forward with our uh, snow drifts. If you, you may have noticed that in our roof properties, we have added two new tables. The first table is inputs for snow drifts on lower roofs. And the second one is inputs for uh, snow drifts on projections and parapets. Now you might be wondering what each of these columns are uh, for. Uh, the first column here is the label where you can add uh, where which direction your snow drift, uh, which direction of your snow drift you're calculating. And then we have the upper roof length, we have our lower roof length, and we have the roof step height. Again, if you click on this title here, you can go and uh, read on what we exactly mean by these dimensions. You can also check out what these are in this image here and check, uh, see which what these dimensions actually mean. The same goes for inputs for snow drifts on projections and parapets. What you have here are two inputs and two, two, two columns that you need to pay attention to. One is the length of the roof um, and the other one is roof step height. So if you click on this, we have described what we mean. And these, these, this is the step height and then this is the length of your uh, roof. One thing that you should uh, take note on is that according to ASC 7-16, uh, section 7.6, drift loads are not necessary if the roof projection side is less than 15 feet or the distance from the balanced snow load height to the projection's bottom, including the support, is uh, at least 2 feet. What we mean by that is if you take a look at this image here, um, if your L or, or B is less than 15 feet or if this height here is bigger than two feet, then you would not require um, snow, um, snow drift calculations. Once you're done with your inputs, you can scroll up and take a look at the snow drift loads section here. We have provided you with, here with two tables that give you the final total snow load on um, your roof. You can also see the snow drift pressure calculated and also the width of the snow drift. So if I add, let's say, my south side and give it some inputs, let's say 15, 4, and 6, you see that I have another row for my south side. Now you may be wondering, why is it that we have different lower roof lengths, but then our snow loads are, uh, are the same? If you want to check out the calculations that are happening behind the scenes, you can scroll down and 
go to the snow drift calculation section where we show how we have calculated our uh, the height of uh, the the drift height for windward and uh, for leeward and windward uh, which is for our snow drift height for lower roofs and also uh, the drift height windward for our snow drift height on projections and parapets if you click on the title again here we have shown the um, formulas granted it is a little hard to understand these but all this is saying is that based on the code uh, that we are using in section 7.7.1 uh, of the ASC 7-16 um, when your LU lower, your lower um, is less than 20 feet, then you will be using um, 20 as um, your um, height. So when my lower roof height is less than 20, then I will be getting a number that's going to be the same that my, my lower height because I'm going to be using 20 in my formula. The same goes with your snow drift height calculations. Here you can you can see where, what these numbers are, and also you can check out the formula. That's what I had for our snow, snow drift calculations and unbalanced snow loads. Uh, please let us know if you have any further questions or suggestions. Have a great day. Bye bye.